Good evening to you all. I would like to start by saying my principal and I are very excited to be in Tel Aviv. <laughs> to us back home, Israel is our only place, and we are very happy to be in Israel. My name is Kelvin Do, aka DJ Focus. I was born on the 26th of October 1996, and I am a proud Sierra Leonean. I live in a small community town in Freetown called Wazak Farm. I am the youngest in a family of five children. I was raised up single handedly by my mother. Our resilience and self-belief made it possible for me to be alive today. My creative instincts were always present, even as a little kid. I would dream that I was installing battery power lights at the homes of my neighbors. But I didn't make much of it at the time because I was too young to understand the meaning of my dreams. As a young boy, I could chalice. So, at the age of 11, I started picking up scrap electronic items from trash areas on my way home. Because I was too poor to afford new parts, and my only option was to go around trash areas and find parts that I need. And once I got the parts that I want, I will go to bed at around 7 p.m., and I will wake up after midnight when everybody will have gone to bed. My mother will wake up most nights to see our living room transform into a small electronic scrapyard. And she will insist that I go back to bed. Though she meant no harm, she didn't understand where I was going because I was just following my passion. She was just concerned for my well-being. But when I realized that with scrap, I could still make things work like my battery and FM radio station, I started fixing radios for people in my community for free. In places like my community in Sierra Leone, the most valuable asset in most households is a radio. A radio will serve as a main source of news, music, and family entertainment but I took in many, many radios that I can fix. After repeatedly failing to make good on my promise to fix the radio for an old man, he came angrily one morning to take back his radio, only for me to discover that I had lost the radio. The old man then got very angry, and my mom got even angrier, and she asked me to stop fixing radios for people. And that was the end of my radio maintenance business. So I decided to focus on working on these crap electronic parts. I used parts like resistor, transistor, capacitor, cardboard to build my own circuit board. I ended up building a three-channel mixer, a sound amplifier, and a microphone receiver. Putting all of these together, I discovered I had built a music set. I soon became a DJ, and I took the name DJ Focus. Let me ask you, DJ Focus. I started playing music for people in my community, and I will normally DJ like this. Stand up, the great philosopher in the building, baby. It's the biggest, the hottest, the famous DJ in the old municipality, kicking yard and banging. This is the biggest heavyweight tool. History in the making, baby. It's the nation pride, beyond your imagination. It's the most wanted DJ, I and I DJ man focus. <laughs> and people started giving me tips for my services, but most of the money they gave to me, I spent it all on batteries. So I decided to make my own battery. I took an alkaline battery apart, and then I look at its component and try to make mine. 
After failing several times, I went to my uncle, who helped me to make the first battery for my music set. And I was now able to make a couple of batteries for people in my neighborhood. At the age of 14, I started thinking about what I could do that could be bigger than my music set. I love listening to DJs on radio station. I love their music and also the way they play on the station. But I dreamt of one day being on a radio like them. Then it came to me that I can make my own radio station and become a DJ there. Even though it was tough and hard, I spent many frustrating nights trying and failing, but nevertheless, I still persevered until I completed the project. Almost 16 months later, one morning, I told my elder brother that I'm ready to do a live test transmission of my FM radio station. He just laughed at me. So I went inside our living room to tune the old radio, and I told my elder brother to talk on the microphone whilst I climbed up the roof of our house to fix up the antenna. A few minutes later, my station was on, and I could not believe it. What soon spread around my community about my FM radio station. I got two of my best friends to work in the station with me. So when people bring in jingles, I think um, we call them radio adverts, to be played on here, they will give me like a little amount of money, and I will pay my friends from part of that money, and I will keep the rest to invest in my station. But I ran into trouble when I discovered that my broadcast signal on 94.5 was jamming that of a famous radio station in Sierra Leone. And my mom was so afraid and she told me to take my station off the air so that I would not be arrested by the police. Fortunately for me, I was able to change the frequency and still keep the station on air. And then the fame started. The national television station in Sierra Leone soon heard about what I had done and put me on here for a live demonstration. And I then participated in a national innovation competition. And I was one of the finalists. And I got selected to participate in the 2012 World Maker Fair in New York. And then an amazing opportunity came to me. And I became the youngest visiting practitioner at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. And I was also privileged to meet the president of Harvard University. And my mentor in the state, David Sanger, got Tinker to do a video of my story, which was later posted on YouTube. And at the latest count, this video has had more than 4 million views. And somebody mentioned to me that my video was even more popular than that of President Obama's victory speech. Um, recently, I was invited for the TED Talk in New York City, and it was awesome, and I got to know Chelsea Clinton. And President Clinton invited me for the Clinton Global Initiative also in New York City. <laughs> the President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, Dr. Ernest Baikuma, gave me a presidential medal, this little guy you see now. <laughs> and I want to say thanks to His Excellency Dr. Anes Baikuma. And in my TED talk, I say creativity is universal and can be found in places where one does not expect to find it. And perseverance and passion are essential to nurture in that creative ability. So now that you know my own story, I urge you to look for young people with talent, creative abilities, and passion in all places. Not just in places you might expect to find it. And I ask you to support these young people, just as so many people have supported me. You never know, you might find the next DJ Focus. Thank you. <laughs>